Do you get trolled for being a Freemason? Uh, no, that's one thing I don't. Now, you know what, Freemason... Free What's ma- that ring right there? That is a Freemason's ring. Um, I'm worshipful master of my lodge. A worshipful master of the lodge? Yeah. What does that mean? It means I'm... I'm the man who's in the main seat at this present time, and to be honest, it's a, it's a long. It's this is a long run, as Neil Neil will be able to tell you. Mainly because of the pandemic, um, I was coming to the end of my my term. You do one, you can, you can do two years if you want, but I was only going to do the one year in the chair. Um, but ultimately, um, because of the pandemic, I'm I'm coming into my third year. Is it my third year? Third year, yeah, into my third year. But it's um, look. I've watched your programmes where you've talked about many things and you've talked about Freemasonry and I hear some people's views on Freemasonry. Um, it's nothing It's nothing like that. And people have had, I don't know, four hours of me yet? You're today. at the record right now. I think you're at 4.15. Yes, it's one thing Newcastle's going to win this season. <laughs> um, but you know what? You know what? We're looking at it, looking at it with Freemason, listening to what everybody says. I understand conspiracies and stuff like no, that. No adrenochrome but... or satanic ritual... Worship. None of that, man. You know what? I, you know what I was in years ago. I was in a thing called Rotary, Rotary International, and Speakers um, Club. Yeah, yeah. Rot- Rotary International. Well, Freemasonry is like it's just a different level, but it's with obviously with the ritual that you do. Um, I never wanted to go into Freemasonry, um, but I was asked on numerous occasions, and you get asked to go into it. You get asked by maybe as a friend or or by a by a, you know maybe as a relative, you know, but. My relatives, none of my relatives had ever been in as far as I knew. But I enjoyed Rotary. And I used to go to Rotary with my granddad and my dad, um, my, my dad's father. And that used to be the Hewith Golf Club, not far from where I live. And um, I was only 18, 19, but you used to go on a Tuesday afternoon. You used to go, um, you, you paid like £2 in. Like that used to go straight into the charity. And then you would sit and have your dinner. Um, you get a three-course meal, you pay for your meal, you know, six, seven quid for a three-course meal back in those days, 30 years ago, and um, pint of orange and water at dinner time or a pint or whatever anybody was having. You'd have the, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, the, you know, the, the local, um, you know, the lo- you know, the local orchestra, or whoever, whoever would come, they would all be sitting having their dinner and then somebody would do a speech. Sometimes it would be Newcastle's manager, it might be a rugby player, it might be a golfer, it might just be, you know, a, a businessman who's passing through, who's done some great things. But it was a charity raising organisation. I've got to be honest, I really enjoyed it as a young age to go to something like that with your dad and your granddad. And it was a rare, a rare, a rare thing because we were three generations who were in it. So I, I think I got my enjoyment from going to something like that then. Um, but then that stopped, Rotary stopped, the numbers the, the, the numbers dwindled. I think, you know, they eventually stopped doing it. It, it amalgamated with another club and my dad and my granddad didn't want to go. That was it. Never thought anything more of it. I then got asked to go into the Freemasons probably about 13 years ago um, by a guy who I knew from Newcastle United's games. And when he talked about it and he gave us the leaflet, um, you know, this is what you can do. It was a sporting, a sporting lodge, you know, where, you know, they have, they have different lodges with different things and different, you know, you could, if you're in a sport, that's, that's the lodge for you kind of thing. But I just didn't fancy it. And you had to pay a fee to join. And then you had to, and it was the ritual that put us off. And I hadn't gone back. What in. was the ritual? Well, no, they, they, just, they just said, well, there's a little bit of ritual that you have to learn, but they don't tell you. They didn't tell you at that time. And to be honest, I hadn't looked at it on the internet. I, I wasn't that interested in doing it. Um, and then about eight years ago, I got a I got a phone I got a, a message on Facebook from uh, Neil King, good friend of mine who I used to know from you know I'd met I'd, I'd known him when I was a kid growing up. Um, he lived like local like local to me grandparents, and I would play with him if I was in 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 the area. And then when we got to like drinking age, we would see each other out and about when we we're seventeen, eighteen, and that kind of thing. Um, but I never really we never really kept in touch. But he you know obviously we're friends on Facebook, and he said, look, I'm in the Freemasons. Just wondered if you fancied you know fancied having a look at it. I think you'd be ideal for it. So, well, I've been asked before, I'm not really sure, you know. But anyway, because it was Neil, I said, I'll have a look at it. So he said, look, it's all transparent these days, it's all online, have a look. He says, there is a joining fee, there's an annual membership. He says, and there is a bit of ritual you, 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 you can learn if you want to get into that. He says, but if not, you can just come, you can be part of it, come to a meeting. So he says, come to a meeting, you can come as my guest. You can't come into the temple, he says, but you can come to the after bit, you know, the, the bit where we all get together. So I was like... Right, OK, well, I've got a black suit. Yeah, I'll go. I'll, I'll take the step. I'll go. So anyway, he, was, he wasn't 
but he wasn't begging us, but I, because it was Neil and because I thought, if anything, I can go and have a couple of drinks with him, see him catch up for old time's sake and knock, I'll not go. Anyway, when I went to it, about 20, 20 guys there um, at, at the Masonic Hall, it's just a just a big room, you know, a bit like the, the canteen where I visited Ronnie Cray, you know, like a big, big room, like all these tables set out in chairs, tablecloths, bar at the far end. Um, I'm not allowed to go in the temple, so I don't know what on earth's going on there. All I see is the guys... You know, you'll, you'll have seen them. The guys just wear pinnies. They wear, they've got their black suit on. They've got they've got their pinnies on. They go into this room and that's it. And that's all I see. And then they come back in. Everyone sits down. Then there's a, there is a there is a routine. They'll you know they have they have their announcement. They'll get up and they'll, they'll you know maybe sing sing the national anthem. Um, and that's it. You sit and have your, you sit and have your dinner. Um, three course meal. There's a raffle. Then at the end, there's this sing song. What I'm thinking is it it's not just going to be one person, it's everybody in the room. Everybody in the room. And I'm looking around going, looking at the, the, this mix of people, like old and young, that all know the words, that all know the song, and they all get up. And I, I've got to be honest, at first I felt a bit uncomfortable with it, because I thought, this is weird. But I sat and watched them get up and and do it. And I was I was blown away with it. I thought, wow, this is something a bit different. This isn't me going out on the drink with me mates and, you know, potentially getting into a bit of bother, waking up the next morning with beer fear. This is me, like, going into a room with other lads. And there was a few lads my age and I'm in the, 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 the late 30s, early 40s. And I thought, actually, this is a bit of a different thing for me. Maybe this is, maybe it's time for me to grow up a little bit here. And that was that was my mindset. So they give us the opportunity to, to join. And again, it's not telling any tales out of school. Um, you know, but essentially they just said, look, you know, you have to come to a meeting. You have to fill the form in. You fill a form in, it's very simple, name, address, convictions, you know, just just a basic, simple form. Once you do that, you just need to go in and, and sit in front of the committee. Everybody has to do it. You go in, you have your interview. Um, your interview is just dead simple. It's just to get to know you. You to get to know these people and that's it. They don't tell you about what's going to happen, what, you know, what, what, the, what the next step is. They just say that if you want to get involved, you have to go through, you know, you have to go through your, your degrees. And it's as simple as that. And, you know, for me, I, I felt it was the right time of life to get involved in something which was a bit more mature and a bit more sensible. Um, it, you raise money for charity. It, it, was my, it was my way of putting something back and... Look, there's been programs inside Freemasonry. I think on Sky, Sky was superb. Um, you know, you get you, you could see there's a lot of well-known Freemasons. Rick Wakeman, for for example, big big Freemason. Um, but that program opened the doors. Um, it showed you showed you what people wear. It showed you if you were the, the you know the, the degree ceremonies to a degree. You can go on the internet and you can read what they do. Um, for me, it's about giving to charity and it's about working with the local community and getting to know so many different people. And um, it's something, it's something to be honest, I'm immensely proud of that I've become part of because it's not what people think. It's not, it's not devil worship. It's not satanic. It's, it's something which actually is putting a hell of a lot into the community. And I think the big moment for me when I realised what, what Freemasonry actually helps is when there was those hor horrendous terrorist attacks on the Westminster Bridge and that big red helicopter came flying in that was donated to um, the RAF by the Freemasons. That's where our money goes into things like that. The first responder on the scene when the Westminster Bridge terrorist attack happened um, was a Freemason helicopter from our donations. <sighs> Higher up the tree and, and stuff like that, is that where I want to go? Do I want to be doing all these other things running all over the province? I, I'm not really sure. I enjoy doing the Freemasonry to this degree. The ritual and learning learning, learning the different things that we do on a, on a, on a, on a ceremony has been very useful as an actor because I'd got back into professional acting as a 40 year old. So getting in and doing the ritual has been really, really handy because it's like any ritual from any anything. It's 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 not language we use every day. It's not something you use in the street, uh, Sean. So it a lot of it doesn't really make sense when you when you're reading it. But you know, and when you're learning it, it's actually quite difficult. But it's been a challenge, and it's a challenge I've embraced. And you know, I'm coming to my ninth year as a Freemason um, but within that first seven years I went from basically coming and sitting in you know just sitting in on the ceremonies and becoming the, the the worshipful master of the lodge and as I say something I'm immensely proud of because to get to that to get to that position in a short space of time is is not very common um, but it just shows that I've I've gone into it like I do everything Sean 
I give it me hundred percent commitment. And you know, I'm pleased to say that you know Neil came in. You know, you know, a few years ago, I asked him if he fancied it. He was very reticent, like you. Um, had heard a lot about you know about you know the other side of Freemasonry, but it isn't until you get in that the you know the the myths of goats and stuff. It's something we see. You, know, you wind people up. You know about <laughs> it is. It, we all laugh about it, but it's the kind of thing we all say. Make sure you wear two pairs of pants or. Oh, it's the goat this time. You know, it, it, it's one of those things, but it's, you know what, I'm glad I'm involved as well because it's a dying art um, because a lot of the people who were involved in Freemasonry are in their, in their 60s and 70s and it's been their life for 30, 40 years. And you can see back in the day, Freemasonry then was, um, was all about, it was all about like 200 people turning up and everybody more or less was part of the Freemasons. And after, after a few years being in, my mom turned around and went, your granddad was in the Freemasons, you know. And this was the granddad who I loved the most. Oh. It was my granddad, Green, who gave us me love for football, who um, died when I, um, I was only 13. And essentially, he is the person, like Wild Man for you, he's the person who watches over me. Wow. And um, he'll, be pr he'll be proud that I followed in his footsteps. I followed in his footsteps in football. And unbeknown to me, I followed in his footsteps as a Freemason. And I'm immensely proud of that fact. Is there a Masonic handshake? There is. You can see it on the internet. I'll do it. I'll do it off camera. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you sign the form and you join. <laughs> Look, I think you know what. You know what? It's it's one of those things. That it's it's almost become um, common knowledge now. Uh, you know, but you know, you, you know the, the, the way that the ceremonies go, the stuff that we can't discuss, the stuff that we can't say, that's part of the ritual. It's part of being a Freemason. It's part of the secrecy, I suppose. Um, and that's why it's always been looked at as a, as a secret society. But I think what's happened is the Freemasons have now come into the modern era. And I think they've realised now, they've, in, they've embraced the internet, they've embraced television, they've embraced media, they've embro embraced social media. Um, and I think they've realised now that, you know, now is the time to move into the future. And, you know, it's not as, you know, it's not as secretive anymore. And I think that's a massive positive. And that's only helped increase membership and numbers. Um, and it's it, it's helped money raised for, for good causes and good charities, you know what I mean? And I am glad I went in. I'm glad, I mean, you know, I remember I remember being very hesitant going into that, my very first meeting, um, and, and how nervous I was. I'm more nervous about that than turning up at that lap dancing club that night. But uh, <laughs> but you know what? It's it's a laugh um, and, and you, there's some great people. And um, the best thing about it is going to visit the different lodges and going to different countries when you, you know, when this all passes, you know, going to maybe Spain. And if you're maybe going to somewhere, instead of find, instead of trying to find the best rave now, I'm, I'm trying to find where the lodge is to go and, <laughs> go and have a look in. But if anybody in the Northeast watching this wants to find out what the, in, if, they're, if they're intrigued or they're interested and want to do it, Go and, go and have a look on the internet. Go and search it out. And then go and find your local lodge and have a chat with the people. But also, go to Beamish Museum when we eventually have museums open again. There's a full, a fully built Masonic lodge there. So if you want to know what the internal of the lodge looks like and the history of Masonic, um, get yourself to Beamish and go to the Masonic Hall in Beamish. It's wonderful. You can walk in. You can go and sit in the main chair. You can go and have a look. You can see all the lodges. There's nothing secretive about it. And just, you know, just go and, you know, go and fill yourself in and, and get a little bit of history. It's well worth a trip, Beamish Museum. I've got a family member who's high up in, in uh, America. I'll uh, perhaps introduce you so you can go and check out his lodge. Oh, be, honestly, it, yeah. it, it's fascinating. It's, it is fascinating. I never thought, but that's getting older, isn't it? It's getting, it's, it's growing old and, be, and becoming mature. I never thought I would ever be in that, in that role where I would want to do that. But um, it's something I enjoy and, you know, I enjoy my Masonic life and it's something which uh, I think personally has made me a better person.